Swear. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little different, but we're back. This uh, is hilarious. What's uh, I mean, what's the feel? I mean, I know how hard you've been working and all the you know the starts and the stops and the changes, but it looks like we're good. So, what's what's the feel from you right now? Yeah, no, everything's good. Um, you know, it's 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 been a good week, and uh, we're right there. You know, get in there tomorrow, make sure everybody's good and healthy, and put this behind us. Can you talk about your motivation for being so aggressive? I mean, obviously. Man, this thing is affecting the world and everybody's trying to figure it out. As a company, I would think it'd almost be easier just to sit back and go, let's let other people figure mm -hmm. this out. You know, why did you say, no, man, we're going to be the first ones out there. We're going to be aggressive. It's, it's not even like it was, I felt like we had to be the first one back. I just knew we would be the first one back. I mean, we were trying to figure out ways to not stop. But, the, you know, the world kept changing every day. And, uh, you know, when everything just shut down, we even figured out how to how to get around that. You know, we could have done California on the uh, what was it, the 18th or whatever the date was. But um, you know, this is really what we do. We've been doing this for a long time. Health and safety is something we worry about every weekend, um, and we did it in Brazil. We did it in Brazil before it had gotten to this level even. And, and everybody got through that, 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 that weekend, say if I'm Mick, Mick was down there too, the, uh, you know, he flew down there and, and, and was in Brazil for days and you know, there were a lot of people down there and they, and they, all, they were all okay. We knew we could figure this out. Are you able to talk about the financial impact it's had on you? I mean obviously you're not getting tickets and we've seen all the efforts. I mean there's, it's gotta be costing you tons of money to have you know, extra staff and all these things in place. Are you able to talk about you know, how this is impacting you guys' business financially? About the what? Yeah, it's, uh, you know, first of all, you, you got to start with no gate. I was just talking to ESPN. I just did uh, Max and Stephen A. And, the, and there was, a, there was a, a woman with them on the show that was saying, well, the NFL revenues are only like 15%. The, the gate is 15% of the NFL. Yeah, the NFL. But each team... The gate's a big deal. It's, it's millions and millions of dollars to each team. You know, gates are millions and millions of dollars to us. It's a big deal. You know, a lot of these people would probably rather ride it out and, and, and uh, you know, figure out how, how they can make the most money. We're going to just keep putting on fights. We'll, we'll take the hit on the gate, and we're going to take the hit on what it costs to uh, ramp it up and be safer um, to keep this, this thing rolling. You have to be willing to spend the money. It's expensive. Anything can be done if you want to do it. It just costs a lot of money. Well, let's talk about actual fights. We've got the main event, obviously, interim title on the line. Exciting fight. Uh, is the winner going to get the unification ballot? I mean, tell us what's going on with Habib, his status, and kind of what you're seeing for the future. I mean, are we definitely getting a unification bout with Habib for the winner of the main event? Yeah, the, win the winner of this fight will, will fight Habib. You know, I know there was a lot of talk with people, you know, different people saying different things that, you know, Habib should have stayed here, he should have done this, he should have done that. We all made mistakes leading up to that, including me. I, I, I made mistakes too that ended up getting him stuck in, in, in uh, Moscow. So he didn't do that on his own. We all had a part in that. And, um, you know, I, I, I even knew more than people knew going into this thing, and I still made mistakes because I didn't, you know, you, in my lifetime, I never thought I'd see the Las Vegas Strip shut down. I never thought that would happen. I didn't even think that was possible, you know, and uh, it happened. So, we, we giving you any kind of ballpark on when he thinks he'll be ready. I mean, I know this is still kind of the world's still trying to figure things out, but has he told you when he thinks he'd like to fight again? Well, I'm always like, all right. Well, if they shut down the airlines, we'll charter a plane. If they do this, we'll buy this. We'll go over here and do this, you know. So I, 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 I thought that there was an answer to everything. Um, and it's a long story what happened with Habib and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus it's not necessary but we made some mistakes he got stuck somewhere and then got sent to Moscow then once he got into Moscow it, it was it just it was a whole nother level of you know yeah, no question. of tough a couple more. We, we, we've got this fight we're looking forward to we got two more in Jacksonville but you talked about May 23rd uh, I think you told Adam that you were trying to do Vegas. Can you give us any update on May 23rd if we have a location and if we have a main event? 
Well, the governor, uh, you know, is starting to loosen up in Nevada now, and some things are starting to open up. So, yeah, hopefully we can still keep that date. And, uh, you know, if, if we can't keep that date, we'll definitely do it in May. We'll, it'll be around May 23rd. Um, and, and, and I don't have a, uh, well, I don't have a main event signed, but I have a main event in mind. That's the Woodley Burn fight? Yeah. Yeah. The Woodley fight. And then just last thing for me, I want to ask you about Fight Island. What, what's the latest? Obviously everybody's intrigued by this. You guys are selling merchandise for Fight Island. Uh, yeah. what, what update can you tell us about where, where does it stand right now? And, and uh, if, you know, just what, can you, what, what news? People are intrigued by it. What news can you give us? The infrastructure is being built right now and, and uh, should be done by mid-June, hopefully. And then, you know, I, I don't know if I'll be able to go that weekend or the end of June, but we're looking to pull off an international fight as fast as we can. And did you buy this island or you leave? No, we didn't buy it. Yeah. We just we just cut a deal to, to use it. Yeah. When you, you talk about fans not having fans and the impact that has financially. Do you have like a benchmark of when you can do that? Like what what will the science tell you or what will something tell you? you can yeah, I don't even know. I, I just think it's gonna depend on how fast testing uh, you know you know the, the, the technology gets there. You know, the president was telling me about this thing that you lick and it tells you whether you have it or you don't. I mean, if we start getting tests like that, yeah, we could probably have fans a lot sooner. Did you have the swab test here? Yeah. Was oh, did you not do it? Yeah, of course. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, did I do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we're doing, we, all of us, everybody. Everybody who's here, man, anybody who's associated with this event, is doing it and the uh, the antibody test and there's going to be multiple tests this week, not just one. What, like you've heard obviously a lot of criticism of people like that you're trying to do this. I, you've never cared about that before. Uh, but was there anything that like, stood out to you of, like that was the most ridiculous thing you heard or that was something that really bothered you? Is what he said. Nothing bothers me. Nothing anybody says bothers me. I literally could give a shit what anybody thinks. Um, I. Uh, no, nobody who's associated with this event had to come. Fighters don't have to fight. Uh, my employees haven't had to, you know, ha haven't had to, everybody that's here wants to be here. Um, but, but that's, I, it, and I never doubted that we would pull off an event. My team is, I, I know my team. I know these fighters, you know what I mean? I, I know how these guys are. and, and, and these people who fight are a different breed of human being. They're not like everybody else. And uh, it, it, like I was saying to John, it wasn't a matter of we, we had to be first. I just, I knew we would. I knew we'd be first. I knew, you know. Have, have other organizations reached out to you about what you're doing and what the plans are? Yeah, on? yeah, they have. Yeah, somebody asked me this a few days ago, and, and uh, at that time nobody had, but yeah. Other sports organizations are reaching out and, and asking for, uh, so are other states. Other states have too. Is, any, is anybody sending like representatives or anything to try to monitor, like watch what you guys are doing to try to figure it out for themselves? No, no, nobody's come here to watch, but you know, the, I, I told you about the 30 page document that we submitted. You know, people are asking for it and they want to know what we did, who we used, who we went through, you know, things like that. What is, what's been the response of, people, of the fighters and everybody about? How this has all been. I was just telling the fighters out in the hallway, you know, we couldn't have had a better team to work with. You know, these fighters that are here now have been so great and, you know, everything that they've had to go through to train to get ready for this fight and everything that they've had to go through this week, they've been awesome. So they've made it very easy on, uh, on us uh, to pull this thing off. Nobody's been difficult. Everybody's been great. Have you guys learned anything that you might take? even when things are back to normal, that like, you did something and you're like, hey, this actually works even when we're, when we're in normal time? I don't think so. We got a, we run a pretty tight ship, man. We, we, we've got this thing down to a science. Um, you know, this was just one more thing that we had to figure out. Um, how, how do you keep these guys, uh, you know, as safe as you possibly can with this crazy shit that's going on? Um, and, and nothing is 100%, nothing is guaranteed, and we need them to do their part too. They, they got a list of guidelines that they need to follow while they're here this week too. So if everybody does their part, you know, you eliminate a ton of the risk. You can never get, eliminate 100% of risk. It's impossible to do in life, period. Um, but we eliminate a lot of it with the, with the steps that we've taken this week, and if they do their part and we do our part, it should, should go pretty smooth.
on Steve A. He said he can't train because his gym is closed. I think. I, I think it, I think it speaks for itself. It is, it is where, what it is. Um, you know, most of these states are opening back up. You know, even Nevada. Who, who you know, uh, Nevada, California, and New York, as far as I know, have been like the toughest states. Um, you know, and, and and they're starting to loosen up and open up. We should be able to get a fight by August. I mean, this whole crew trained. We got two more fighters, groups of fighters coming in this week that trained and got ready. And you know, um, you know, the division has to has to move on for all the other people. I mean, uh, you know, we we, we want to do that trilogy fight, and then you got the winner of of Francis and Rosenstrike wait, waiting in the wings too. You know, pe people are waiting. It's it's the right thing to do. What, what was Cormier was doing? Stressed to do the nasal swab. He said Daniel Cormier was stressed about doing the test. Ahead. That's hilarious. One of the toughest dudes in the world of all time. You know, you you see that with a lot of these guys. Some of these guys are afraid of needles, and the stuff that these people are afraid of is fucking unbelievable. And the things they're not afraid of is unbelievable. How do you think pay-per-view buys will be for this? Oh, it's already trending really well. Yeah. You know, and the funny thing is, like, I mean, any of the guys that have been around the sport for a long time know you used to ask me a number, I'd fucking tell you exactly what we were going to do, and I'd be damn fucking close to it. I don't know anything anymore, man. I, I You know, it's, it's I, I have no idea. You, you would think that people haven't, it, listen, I'm so... I'm dying to watch live sports, man. If the golf game was on, I would watch it. That's how, how hard up I am for sports right now. So I would have to imagine that a lot of people feel the same way and want to watch something live. You said that you're happy to give up the gates for a while. Um, is there any sort of level of fight, like a kind of fight that you would have put on without the crowd because of that money you could on the gate? Was, that, was, was the question, is there any level of fight that I wouldn't give up the gate on? It's tough to give up a Conor McGregor gate. It's tough to do. I talked to him yesterday, and and uh, he he wants to fight, and uh, he's excited about tomorrow too. He's like, uh, you know, this is so awesome. Good luck tomorrow. I hope this goes off well. He 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 doesn't like the idea of fighting without a crowd either, but he wants to fight, you know. So I I don't know. We'll have to see how this thing plays out. You know, you do you do a Conor McGregor fight in the right place, you can do an 18 million dollar gate. So that's a big number to give up. I mean, even giving up five million. I mean, this fight was supposed to be Habib sold out in minutes, and it was like a five and a half million dollar gate. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that yet. Um, it's going to depend on how long this thing goes. I I, I don't know. I, you listen, I, to tell you that, I, I don't know if anybody understands this whole thing and, you know, depending on what network you listen to, they tell you different things and Jesus Christ, you go on the internet, forget about it. I mean, it's fucking crazy, right? I, so so I, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know how long this thing's going to last or, you know, who knows. We're just gonna we're gonna put on fights, man. That's 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 what we do, and it's what we're gonna keep doing. And hopefully, I don't have to do this for two years with no gates. Uh, yesterday, Conor went at Dustin Poirier and Jose De La Hoya. Interested in either one of those fights? Conor went after Dustin Poirier and Oscar De La Hoya yesterday. <laughs> Would be interested yeah. in either of those fights. Is fucking Oscar De La Hoya beautiful or what? <laughs> and did he ask for a two-round fight? Anyway. <laughs> Anything else? Sure. Um, to feed off this question there, uh, so are you holding off on Conor McGregor until you can do... I, I don't know. You know, we we're going to see how this thing goes th this, you know, weekend and next week. And, uh, you know, what date we go in Vegas, get back into the apex. You know, I, I just feel like, too, you know... I, I have to thank the, uh, you know, the governor of Florida and, and the mayor 
in Jacksonville for, for, and the commission for working with us. It just, when you, when you have the government working with you, it makes everything so much safer and, and, and easier to do. And you have to think that in Las Vegas, we, we spent $100 million on that facility next door so we could use it. It would be safer for my employees, it would be safer for the media, it would be safer for the fighters, safe for everybody. So um, I want to get back there and, and, and uh, you know, start figuring out what we're going to do and what the rest of our schedule looks like and, and probably run as many fights out of there as I can. I, I mean, if you think about why the Apex was built, that was always the plan anyway. We were talking about doing so many fights that we would just be putting on fights without gates anyway. You would do big fights and put on gates, but, um, and here we are, so. You must be getting some sort of feedback from uh, the powers that be in Nevada that, for you to mention the Apex at this point. I mean, what kind of uh, feedback you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm confident that we're going to be in there soon. Hopefully the 23rd, putting on fights. Were you surprised at the amount of uh, pushback and criticism that you got for just trying to run your business? Yeah. Yeah. There yeah, but, I, I, but the thing is, when you think about Las Vegas, right? If there's no casinos in Las Vegas, that place is a desert. It doesn't exist. So if they're willing to shut down the casinos for two months, Plus, good luck to me. There was an association of doctors that came out around the time when you were trying to do April 18, saying, criticizing that if you do this show, it could put a stress on the California medical uh, infrastructure. Did any doctors reach out to even see what precautions you guys had? No. I, I, when you're talking about the, the, the woman who wrote the letter, the open letter, um, it was already determined that the fight wasn't going to happen by then anyway. I mean, that, that, that really didn't have anything. I mean, they, they, definitely, they definitely had, uh, you know, some impact on it because they were reaching out, you know, to, uh, to ESPN, who eventually came to me and said, let's do this another weekend. So how do you feel now that even though you're shut down in April, Hey, I, I, I was happy. I, I literally told F F Hunter over here, get us in a state where we can't get stopped by the, by, you know, when, uh, by the government, I mean state government. And, uh, and he did it. He did it. We, we got there. We absolutely positively could have ran that event that weekend. And that was good enough for me. We did it. And, and, and here we are today. And you know, if, if we, we could have continued to run our fights, you know, especially if we could have used the Apex. And we would have figured out to make sure it was safe. And I mean, th this is what we do. You know, every weekend we run into problems and, you know, whatever they may be, how big, how small, and we solve them. That's what we've been doing for 20 years. And it's what we'll continue to do for the next 20. So it was actually kind of fun, to be honest with you. Did you guys reach out to Florida or did Florida reach out to you? Did what? Did you reach out to Florida or did they reach out to you? Yeah, so, well, th th there's, off the top of your head, how many places do you think we can go in the United States right now and hold a fight? Ten or one. Yeah. We can go to ten different places right now in the United States and hold a fight. Florida was awesome. These guys were incredible. So, we came here first. And, um, you know, we're, we're, we're laid out. We can go. We got international figured out in June, and we have the United States figured out right now. If this lockdown kept going for another five months, we can go. We're, we're ready to roll. How, how tough logistically was it to put together a hotel that was willing to do what this place was willing to do? Um, yeah, no, it all, it, it all worked out good. Yeah. But you have I can't explain to you enough. This is, this is what we do, and we'll figure it out. You just have to be willing to spend money. It's going to cost you a lot of money. It's not cheap. You have to be willing to, you know, you have to be committed to, to making it happen. Was there a thought to running the pay-per-view earlier Saturday than normal just because there's no other competition on television or anything like that? Mm -mm. 
I think that's a, you know, people are conditioned for what time fights come on, and you know what I mean. And that that time and that that day, Saturday, works for us. So, you know, as we sat down, as this thing started to, I mean, every day, every day we would go into the office and we would figure stuff out that whole day. We would go to bed that night and wake up the next morning and everything would change, literally, right? For, for how many? Every day. For every, three, three weeks. Every day for three weeks, this would happen to us. Right? And literally, he and I would get on the phone that night from our houses and go, this is fucking insane. It just happened again. Now what? So, as we started looking at what the major problems were going to be if this continued to happen, and how long was this going to go on for? And, and when it was over, the one thing that you know that's not going to snap right back is, oh, let's just start, let's start people flying in from all over the world again. Right? So we knew that that was going to be our biggest problem. And if we don't have international fights, we'll smoke the U.S. talent in two months. And then we got nothing. So we needed to figure out how do we put on international fights. Where could you fly people in and out of without a problem? An island. That's how. So we got it figured out. We went in. We cut the deal. And the infrastructure is being built. And I, I, I'm going to imagine that we're going to be doing fights out of Fight Island for, for a minute. When you, and you mentioned like June is a target date? It's what? June is the target date for Fight Island? Yeah, June. Yeah. Hopefully mid-June, but probably, you know, I like to push, so I'm pushing for mid-June, but more realistically the end of June is probably when it'll be. You got to be willing to spend money to put, to put fights on at a time like this. So it's not cheap. None of this stuff is cheap, you know. But we're going to keep going. You know, I, listen, I got, I got over 350 employees with families, the fighters, you know. And it's almost like this thing, like I said, this thing with the media that was going on, what, what, what is wrong with, with continuing to do what you do if you can do it safely? And I just never understood, why don't we figure out solutions to these problems? And, and, and guys, I, I got a really nice house. Fucking great house. I've had, a, you know, the time that I've spent in my house, I've had a blast. My kids are home, you know, it, it, it's been a great couple of months, to be honest with you. And I could just stay home and do this too. But why? Why, 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 do we have to, why do we have to do that if we can honestly figure out how to do this safely? Why? And I'll tell you, it, it, it's just, you know, the, if you come out and you say you want, you want to figure it out and you want to do it, it's like some of these guys out there almost, you know, it's like you were saying, the, the, you know, the shit that was being said, <laughs> said about me. It's almost like, you know, they, they try to terrorize you and shame you into... And there would be media members that, if, if I came out and gave any information, they would just start hammering the athletic commission or the, the hotel or the venue that we were going to with all this, you know. It, it, was, it was a pretty crazy, crazy uh, time. And uh, it really made me dislike the media, big time. Do you feel like a cancel culture moved from... Uh Regular culture over to fixate on, uh, on, on the pandemic. D did I feel like what? Cancel culture. If people don't like what you're doing, they try to just shut you down. Yeah, do you think it was just everybody trying to shut you down? Oh, yeah, 100 percent. 100 percent. Literally, you know, media. Media calling, hammering these guys. How can you let this event happen? How Media who fucking cover this sport. Cover the sport. And I'm like, wait till they start getting laid off. Right? If I can pull this off safely and, and, and everybody can still work, you guys can still have a sport to cover and, and you know. So let me tell you what, when, when, when these media companies, right, you got the guys who cover the NFL, 
You got the guys that cover Major League Baseball. You got the guys that cover the NBA. You got the guys that cover MMA. Who do you think's going first? I promise you it's not the fucking NFL guys, okay? I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this thing fucking going and, and, and put on fights and the guys who are supposed to be covering this sport are calling and hammering these guys, the, the, the athletic commissions and the venues and the just, I can't wrap my brain around that one. Good? Thanks, Dana. Thank you, guys. Thanks for coming. Pretty cool.